We are living in interesting times. 2015 has been a busy year, filled with political challenges and international incidents, from sunken ferries and disappearing planes to the Ebola outbreak and mass protests, from the bloody rise of ISIS, the Ukraine crisis, and the terrorist attacks in Paris, to the Iran nuclear deal, the migrant crisis, and the uncertain integrity of the European Union. I would say that we live not only in interesting times, we live in dangerous times. 2015 is now history. 2016 is the future. What will this new year bring? What can we expect from the next 11 months? Will the world be safe? We live today in an increasingly interconnected and turbulent world where traditional and non-traditional security challenges have appeared one after the other. Indeed, in today's world, modern warfare does not always take on a military coat. Unconventional warfare can be psychological, covert, or by proxy. It can involve currency, trade, and cyberspace, or in more extreme cases, even weather modification, biological and chemical agents, and preemptive annihilation. Therefore, even though our topics of focus is security in the context of Sino-U.S. relationship, the security of all regions and fields of development must play the part in our assessments. We must have a firm understanding of the global context of the Sino-U.S. relationship. Furthermore, in today's world, the economy, the environment, politics, technology, and health all have security implications that must be considered. We face increasingly complex problems, and we must respond by expanding our breadth and acuity of our vision, and also the sensitivity and depth of our concern. To give context to the discussions that will follow, allow me to highlight some of the recent events, trends, and themes which I think are significant which reached and impacted the lives of people around the world. Undoubtedly, in the context of security, the situation in Syria comes to mind first and foremost. The conflict has spawned beyond the violence and instability in the region, a refugee crisis in Europe, a terrorist strikes on all three continents, and the military intervention of major superpowers. What can we expect in 2016? We are seeing the formation of a more united international community against ISIS. In response, it is possible that ISIS may tone down its activities, decentralize its operations, relying more on cell and lone wolf type guerrilla warfare, and move into North Africa. For, for some analysts, ISIS might present a worst case scenario, an attack on the strategic infrastructure of oil producing countries could potentially ignite a global energy crisis. However, given the present fact that no country or countries seem to be willing to assume leadership position against the ISIS, we should be prepared to accept the reality that ISIS will not be wiped out from the face of the earth in the very near future. The international cooperation trying to take on ISIS is at best half-hearted and at worst merely empty slogans. Countries may want ISIS to go away, but none are willing to place the issue at the top of their agenda and to dedicate to it the necessary resources. Terrorism will continue to be a problem. Boko Haram continues to shed blood in Nigeria. In Afghanistan, although the U.S. is expected to finally move towards withdrawal by the end of 2016, we do not foresee peace, prosperity, and stability in that country. Terrorism, a violent manifestation of ethnic separatism, often linked as a corollary of religious zealotry and fundamentalism, presents untold threats to our lives, to social stability, and to national security. It has affected countries in all continents. No country is spared. Nobody is left unaffected. Led by the US, the global community has been fighting terrorism for the last few decades with ever-increasing commitment, resources, and determination. But I'm sad to say that despite all these efforts, 
terrorism has not only failed to be eliminated or subdued, but has been more rampant and disastrous than ever before. I cannot for once stop but to ask, are we doing something not right? Are we barking up the wrong tree? Nonetheless, it is high time that we should join hand in reviewing this issue so critical to our future well-being and develop in a peaceful global environment. Perhaps we should adopt a new paradigm in our overall anti-terrorism strategy. In Latin America, another non-traditional threat continues to, the, to threaten the security of the region, drug-related crime. Bloody killings continue, and in some countries, one is not certain who is running the show, the government or the cartel of organized crime. The most prominent non-traditional security concern has, however, been cybersecurity. While recently this had been overshadowed by territorial issues, in 2016, a return attention to this issue is guaranteed. The issue will certainly play an important role in the Sino-US relationship and may even make the top of the agenda. Cybersecurity is, after all, closely linked to energy and economic security. Looking ahead, we can see that potential security problems are brewing across the globe, particularly in Europe, the Middle East, and China, and Asia. Europe is facing a variety of non-traditional security concerns, the refugee crisis, the integrity of the Union, being tested by the upcoming referendum in the United Kingdom, and the Catalan independence movement, and the euro dollar. The Ukraine crisis and terrorism continue to cast a long shadow over the continent. Having said that, some analysts maintain that the situation in Europe is, although difficult, might still be under control and not going to go anywhere anytime soon. The Middle East continues to present a host of security challenges. Unfortunately, it does not look like we can expect any drastic or immediate changes on the horizon. Therefore, it's the Asia Pacific that will be the place to watch for geopolitical changes in 2016. Territorial disputes are often mentioned as having a potential to trigger conflicts between China and its neighbors. The situation in the South China Sea has caused some littoral states to be concerned, including from across the Pacific, the United States. Indeed, some observers often argue that China is no longer maintaining its decades-long Tao Guang Yang Hui approach, meaning not to show off one's capability, but to keep a low profile. And it has adopted the more assertive foreign policy supported by its behavior in recent territorial disputes. So is China likely to resort to force over territory, as many have argued? According to Taylor Perfrazzo of NPR,